Hey guys, what's up? So in the last video, and um, hopefully you guys watched that, but it, it kind of just goes into what a type system is. And, and really it's something that I think is glossed over when new beginners um, start you know, learning programming and they don't really realize that there's a lot of rules and regulations that are put into how a compiler compiles a program into actual machine code to do what it is that you want it to do. And the type system allows you know, these rules and things um, to, to handle that. You know, so basically it says that when you create an object in memory, it's got to be assigned a type and the type system that decides what type that is and what is able to be done with those types. So if there's conflicting types that are trying to be added and, and uh, smashed together, it's going to complain about it. Uh, or it's going to fail if it's a weakly type language, um, or not fail, but uh, it's going to try to do it automatically if it's a weakly type language like, like Perl. Python will complain at, at runtime um, because it's dynamically interpreted. And then you have a compiled program like C Sharp where it would never even compile if you had two different types that, that were trying to be mashed together without actually doing some sort of conversion. So those are really the, the differences. Uh, dynamically strong type, Python, strong type, um, C Sharp, or um, weakly type like Perl. So then there's this thing that comes along, and a lot of people have questions with, uh, with duck typing, like, right, what is duck typing? And in object-oriented languages, essentially, like, if we look at Wikipedia's de definition, it says, in computer programming with object-oriented programming languages, duck typing is a layer of programming language and design rules on top of typing. So it's built on top of typing. Typing is concerned with assigning a type to an object. Duck typing is concerned with establishing the suitability of an object for some purpose. So in a normal typing system, let's just pretend that this is a string, right? So we declared a string, and the string has a set of rules. So when the compiler runs into this, it knows, hey, that's a string. Uh, I can't type. You guys know what I'm trying to do. So it, it says that's a string, so it has the ability to print to... Um, to split it up into multiple strings or to maybe uh, cut off the last characters, uh, slicing. Um, so it has all these uh, built-in abilities and the compiler knows how to deal with it. So remember how I said in the previous video that if you tried to add a string and an int, it would complain because they're, they're two different types and they can't be mashed together? The compiler knew that one object was an int and one was a string. In dynamic duck typing, it can look at this object that say it's a duck and it's going to look at the actual um, methods and properties on that object to see uh, whether or not it's actually suitable for you know object execution so basically it's going to look at does this thing walk yes it does it can walk does it also eat bread like a duck if you were to feed it bread in a some sort of like domesticated central park setting does it poop on the ground after it eats the bread and make a mess in the park and wherever sort of setting you are where there's lots of ducks or geese? And if it does all of those things, then it must be a duck. So it's done dynamically, meaning it's done during the you know the compilation, the the and during the, the you know the process of the interpreter turning the, the actual code into machine code. And instead of it knowing in advance, hey, I'm dealing with a string or something like that, it's actually just looking at the different features. Does it walk? Does it eat bread? Does it poop? It must be a duck. So it's still somewhat of a, like, I think a difficult concept um, to understand how all that, you know, like plays into programming. But I can tell you that, you know, Python is considered a duck typing language. Uh, so is JavaScript. I believe it is JavaScript as, as well. Actually, I should have looked that up. I'm sorry. I know Python is a, a dynamic duck typing language. I'm pretty sure uh, JavaScript is considered that as well. Now, in object-oriented languages, a lot of the times you, you try to um, do what duck typing, di what duck typing does uh, by using like polymorphism and inheritance. And with dynamic duck typing, it's actually providing polymorphism to you, but without actually having to do the whole inheritance bit, which you would have to do that in a non-duck uh, typing language. So it gives you a lot of flexibility and freedom. Um, but, uh, you know, it's also considered, um, you know, blasphemy to some other programmers, like in, in a, you know, fully object-oriented sense that, that doesn't allow duck typing. Um, in strongly typed languages, I think have, uh, programmers from those backgrounds have a, a harder time trying to, I guess, accept those, uh, you know, the, the characteristics of a duck type language. So to give one final example in actual code, 
if we look at this, we can see that uh, a class, you have a class defined as a duck and it quacks and it has feathers. And then you have a person that also quacks and has feathers. So if we ran this program, a person could actually be considered a duck. And a person is a duck because it does the exact same thing that a duck does. So if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck and it poops like a duck and it eats bread like a duck, then it must be a duck. So hopefully you guys can kind of wrap your head around that. And um, there's definitely more examples and probably more of an academic uh, definition of, of duck typing than my childish example. But I felt like it might kind of help clear things up in case you guys are ever wondering. And yes, this thing looks more like a goose, but yeah, it is what it is. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good night. Bye.